Hello, this is the RPG Pundit, the final boss at Internet Shitlords. I'm enjoying a nice summer day outside here. And today, I am doing a review of the Green Messiah. And uh, the Green Messiah is an adventure for Lamentations of the Flame Princess. And it is hard to open. There, <laughs> there we go. Alright, we've got... Uh, a sec, I'm trying to get to the credits page here. There it is. So... Written allegedly by Messiah Green, actually Kelvin Green. <laughs> His legal name, Kelvin Green. Uh, Alex Mayo doing the layout. Tom Cataret. All right, and there, uh, you know, this is this is another one of the big batch of Lamentations books that I got from um, from Jim Raggy all at once. <laughs> this is the second one I'm doing. I did the the first one I did was Tear in the Streets, which you can check back in my in my uh, videos to see what what I thought of that one. Um, this one, oh, there goes the meatball. She's a bit pissed off at me because I had to give her her flea medicine today. Got to do that once a month. <laughs> and uh, she wasn't happy as usual. Anyway, um, the Green Messiah is about like a, an alien plant child um, that's taking over the world. And uh, it's one of the least weird products out of that whole batch. So <laughs> this is about as good as it gets. You know, uh, he's been a very naughty boy, or it's not easy being green. Um, years ago in the quiet Sussex hamlet of town Littleworth, real real place, by the way, something from the black extra cosmic gusts and space fell from the sky. Um, something that a childless couple took in and raised as their son, and this one act of kindness, they may have doomed the world. So this is a, an adventure suitable for characters of most levels and vegetarians. Um... And uh, as most of the, the Lamentations products, it's set, vaguely speaking, in England in the, in the 1630s. I could see this being very easily adaptable to being played in England in the 1430s, <laughs> if you wanted to use it in Lion and Dragon, for example, um, or, or, you know, or any time in between. Uh, it comes with a nice, nice-looking little map of the village for what that's worth. Um, art is very good. As you can see, page quality is very good. Um, it's 48 pages long. Got nice quality of stock, nice coloration, everything. In terms of production value, as usual with Lamentations, it's a good production value. Nothing to, nothing to worry about there. And um, the adventure itself is a pretty straightforward adventure i mean um reasons various reasons provided for why the characters could get into their into the 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 adventure um background on the character the you know the main villain as it were um you've got these like doppelganger plants which if you if you've got lion and dragon and you know about like homunculi you know that's definitely a homunculi right it's uh it's what it was uh what it's meant to look like, you know? <laughs> so, uh, you've got, uh, you know, um, some areas of this product become anachronistic and slightly beyond just weird fantasy in go zooming right past gonzo fantasy and into camp, you know, or however you want to call it, corny fantasy, right? So here you have the men in black, right? So in 1630s, <clears throat> just because, just to have that element because it's supposedly like an alien star child, right? Um, you got some random bandits there. So like there's there's bits of this, and again, as usual with, with these current batch of, well, at least so far, two out of two, I guess, um, of these current Lamentations books, the text, the way it's written is this weird flip-flopping from like being totally serious. I heard a mute. Oh my, look at this situation. It's Big Chungus. <laughs> Big Chungus is upstairs. <laughs> hi, Big Chungus, how's it going? Say hi to the fans. Meow. Meow. Yeah, there we go, Big Chungus. <laughs> Big Chungus is up high and she wanted us to know it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, Meatball looks a little bit jealous. Oh yeah, she's, she's fucking off. She wants nothing to do with this production today. <laughs> okay, so uh, anyway. Um, you know, they'd flip-flops back and forth from, like, you know, 
having a serious tone to being facetious, right? Not just stuff like the Men in Black, but also like the actual text where you'll have sudden moments of breaking the fourth wall or this kind of snappy banter type writing. I've never liked that. I mean, if you've read my books, you know that, that I've never liked that. <laughs> so um, I like the, the, the books to present things in a straightforward way for the DM. Um, and, you know, there's like slight elements of homage to sort of the Superman story here, except it all goes horribly wrong. Um, uh, basically useless illustration here. Um, and, uh, you know, the characters basically have to, to um, confront a, a truly weird situation and find a way to stop this, this kid who is gradually replacing people with, with homunculi. Um, and with a plan to like basically take over the whole world. Um, and there's various ways presented to do it. It's set up very much as a, as a sandbox sort of setting. There's um, you know, some, some magic stuff in the form of the weird fruit. And uh, the thing is, of course, some of these weird fruits are really awesome. Some of them are bad and some of them have like a 50% chance of being really awesome or terribly bad. Right. So, so it's stuff where, you know, the, uh, the players are putting their lives, uh, on the line and hoping for the best, you know? Um, so, you know, on, as a whole, the, the, the adventure is good. I could certainly see it being playable. I would take away the, the men in black. I would take away a couple of the the more boring details, you know, not boring, but the more, the more goofy details, that's a better way to put it, which, which to me is boring. Excessive goofiness always becomes boring. Um, some slight, you know, black humor is cool, but, um, in, in this sort of adventure, but when you suddenly jump completely out into like, you know, your player characters are serious investigators in, in a 1630s context during the, 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 you know, conflicts of, of that era, um, you're on a mission for the king, and then suddenly there's the men in black. You know, like it just it just shakes everything off. <laughs> anyway, so that's like the worst thing for it. Um, inspiration, the movie *Brightburn*. Yeah, okay. Um, *Color Out of Space*, *Invasion of the Body Snappers*, *Swamp Thing*. Okay. Um, names table. That's always useful. You guys know if you have *Lion and Dragon* that I have a names table, and it's based on the actual most popular names in 15th century Great Britain. Um, I'm not sure if this is an accurate name table from the 1630s or not, though it, I guess it certainly could be. Um, <laughs> a lot of Roberts and Thomases there. Yeah, that, that's, that, that checks out, actually. <laughs> that checks out. Um, an appendix, handy appendix that has all like stat blocks that you need for the adventure right at the back. Another little map at the end. Um, it's a small adventure. It's a fun adventure. Um, my feeling is that it it doesn't know if it wants to totally like go go complete cornball or if it wants to be like serious horror, and so it ends up getting stuck a bit in between. But that's fixable, right? You as the DM can probably fix that. You can decide to go all out, you know, stupid Gonzo level humor. You know, so it, it looks almost like a Avengers Satanist joint. Or you can decide to go all out into like it being a serious, you know, no, no moment of levity, horrifying body snatcher scenario with this like evil green god, right, at the, at the back of it all, right? Um, because, you know, as much as this is, this, the, he wanted to add like the kind of Superman story to it, this is fundamentally the terror of the green man, right, the dark pagan imagery of the, of the, the creature of the plants that, that will... Um, you know, it must be venerated, but that can be, that could, that could consume all, you know? Um, and I think that's way cooler, but I, I also think that doing it like full on corny gonzo is cooler than doing something that flip flops and your players don't know how to, you know, like what to do about it. Right. So that's my position. That's what I'm suggesting here is that you, um, you probably want to, to decide which way you want to go with it. Um, it's a fine adventure. Otherwise you, you, you could get some fun out of it. You know, um, I'd, I'd say that apart from those kind of slightly pesky details of, of exactly figuring out what it wants to be. Um, it's, it's certainly worth picking up 
And if you like these kinds of adventures that have this tinge of cosmic horror, um, you're probably going to enjoy Green Messiah. And uh, I guess that's everything for today. I hope you enjoyed this review. Um, if you like it, please share it anywhere you think people find it interesting. And um, if you want to support me, you've got, well, you know, I've got a Patreon link, but do that if you've only bought all my books, right? <laughs> if, you, uh, if you haven't, check out my books. You know what? I don't have it on hand to show it to you, but Star Adventure has just hit gold bestseller, top-notch game, 38 pages, $9.99. Um, in print, you get it in print and PDF that way. And it's like been so praised by people. You know, I wrote it because I wanted to run a Star Wars campaign, basically. <laughs> and, uh, and it's turned out to be like one of my most popular products. You know, people absolutely adore the, that it, the, that the compactness of it and the completeness of it, relatively speaking, in terms of everything you need mechanically to run a, a, a really good space opera game. They, they are happy with it, and I'm happy that they're happy. <laughs> uh, in other news, uh, the Old School Companion 2 is still, after months, on the uh, top 10 OSR bestseller in drive through RPG. I think the last time I checked, it was like number 7. It keeps flipping around between 5 and 7 around there. And, uh, you know, that's really been, been a huge success, too. So if you, uh, you know, if you pick whether or not you pick up Green Messiah, you know, I, I, I would say if you like the style of Green Messiah pick it up. If you want something that is that same kind of um, culturally authentic style, not 16th century or 17th century, but rather uh, 15th century, um, and that that is um, much more on the kind of straight end of the spectrum, right? Like, and straight in the sense of like, this is going to be direct homage to myth, to legend, to folklore, or in the cases of, you know, like the the occult uh, of the the occult killer antagonist scenarios, uh, the you know direct horror, you know, um, but all medieval style, right? And so you're not we're not going to break the mold by becoming anachronistic, and we're not going to break the mold by um, suddenly being silly, you know. And uh, that's you got 320 pages of that in the old school companion too. 26 adventures, uh, all of them. Really cool stuff. A lot of them investigative, um, but also some others, you know, like dun there's dungeon crawls, there's uh, overland travel, there's um, negotiation-based adventures, there's all kinds of stuff. And, and you're going to, I'm sure you're going to enjoy the vast majority of the, <laughs> the medieval authentic adventures there for your OSR games. So check out the Old School Companion too. But also, again, check out Green Messiah. Uh, I think that if you, uh, if you think that nothing about what I described, like the downside of it, is um, is an absolute no-go for you, um, you're probably going to find it a worthwhile adventure. And it's it's very pretty also. So uh, stay tuned for more reviews of uh, not just Lamentations, but I've gotten lots of other review products. I don't know what happened because for a while there was there's a few months where there was like nothing on my review table and now I've got like I don't know, 15 books to review. But I guess that's just how it is. Uh, so stay tuned for more of these, but also stay tuned for more rants and all of my regular stuff coming up soon. Um, be sure to check out the inappropriate characters from last week if you haven't already. It was We aired it on Sunday. And uh, I guess that's it. We'll see you guys soon. Oh, yeah. Currently smoking. Um, this is uh, Stanwell Deluxe plus Argento Natural. And, uh, oh, no. Chungus is gone. Meatball doesn't want to talk to me. I guess it's time to end the video.